Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the container and column filter options. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. Filter options in containers, columns and nested columns have been around since Avada 6.1. These filters are much like ones found in Photoshop or other editing programs. There are 8 filters in all, Hue, Saturation, Brightness, Contrast, Invert, Sepia, Opacity and Blur. And there are options to apply these on both the normal and the hover state of the container or column. You can apply any of the filters individually or together with separation between normal and hover state. And the filters applied on a column also work in conjunction with filters applied on the parent container. Filters affect not only the containers and columns but also the content in them. How you use these filters is up to you, and there are an enormous number of possibilities here. A guiding principle with this sort of thing is less is more. It's very easy to overdo this sort of effect. Let's have a look at an example of this feature in action. I've imported the Avada Food Prebuilt site, and I've made a new page here with multiple image elements in individual columns, with the images opening in a light box, and all with the same gallery ID, so they form a gallery. As you can see, the images are somewhat desaturated, and although you can't really tell this, they are also partially transparent. When I mouse over the image however, the saturation returns, as does the full opacity. This is a pretty striking effect. If I open an image in the light box, you can see the image is completely normal here, and all the other images are in thumbnails along the side, and we can scroll through the gallery. Ok, so how was this put together? Let's have a look in the builder. The key to this particular gallery is that I have applied the filters on a column level. Filters are also available on containers as well, but if I'd applied them to the parent container here, then all the images would change at once. This is also why I didn't use the gallery element, as that would also be in one column, and again all the images would change at once. As you can see in the navigator, I have 9 one third columns in one container, with an image element inside each one. Nothing special has been done to the image element, everything is coming from the column filter effects. So let's edit a column and take a look. I'll just go to the extras tab where the filters are. As you can see, filters have two states, normal and hover. In this example, I haven't edited the hover state at all, which means when I hover over the column, I get the normal contents. But in the normal state, I get the filtered contents, which is what we can see here. Alright, as mentioned earlier, there are 8 filters in all, but just because you have options doesn't mean you should always use them. In this case, I've changed two. I haven't touched the first one, Hue, but if you're that way inclined, that shifts the colour of the columns and everything in them in a full 360 degrees. I've gone for a more subtle approach, and I've desaturated the columns to three quarters of their original value, by reducing the saturation value to 75 from the default 100. With the brightness and contrast values as well, you can either reduce or increase the amount of these from the default of 100. They probably work best with a subtle touch, or with a combination of filters. Invert is the next option, and this fully inverts the column at 100, like a colour negative. Sepia as well goes from 1 to 100, and adds a sepia tone over the image. I'll leave both of these on 0. Then there's Opacity. Here I've reduced the opacity of this column from 100 to 75, which in effect fades it. But it's important to remember that this is opacity, and if there was anything behind this column, it would start to show through. If I reduce this all the way, we can see the column disappears entirely, only to return upon rollover. I'll set this back to 75. The last filter is Blur. This is set to 0 so there is no blur, but you can put this all the way up to 50, which is a rather dramatic effect. If I move over to the Hover State tab, we can see the values are at their default, as I mentioned before. Here, there is one more option when editing columns. This is the Hover Element option. Here you can choose whether the filters you set are triggered when you hover over the column itself, or when you hover over the parent, which in this case would be the container the column is in. In both cases, it's still only the column that displays the hover filter. Here, I'll leave it on self, so you have to mouse over the individual image columns for the effect to show. There is a huge diversity of options available with this feature, so experiment to see what you can do. 
In conjunction with the transform effects found below the filter types on columns, the animation effects available in columns, containers and many elements, and the container and column background options, there is virtually nothing your imagination can conceive that can't be created. We have videos on all these individual features, which I will list below the video. Ok, thanks for watching. This concludes our video on how to use the container and column filter options. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.